Yeah, Segan, the native history buff. Uh, he puffs up his pride. Look, uh, my London friend, uh, uh, the native inhabitants of the Yarkon Valley, just north of King Sharif and Mastuj, uh, they're of Persian descent. They're descended from the, well, what was left over of the Hashishan Assassin Kingdom. Well, the Mughals finally poured through the passes like uh, out-of-date tartar sauce, and they just gee everybody with the sword, huh? Those horses? Too many. You just couldn't. Well, a few assassins uh, sneaked off. And where did they go? Shh. That's right, the Yarkon Valley. And um, these Yarkunis, huh? They're followers of the Aga Khan, direct descendant of the old man of the mountain Ashishan, Alamut Rock. We're talking 11th century Persia. After the death of uh, <laughs> that Indian yogi they called a Jew and the Mexican called the uh, Jesuses, uh, all the Romans didn't make any excuse of what to do with him. Just nail that rebel up. As a warning, huh? Yeah. You mean there's a sass and hashish up here? Exclaims Kifling excitedly. A sass and hashish, the rarest in the world. The most precious, the most sought after. Yo. Um, <laughs> Kifling is licking his dry lips now. Uh, well, Sikander, he feels charmed uh, by the camaraderie and, uh, well, the mellow energy, natural charm of his passenger. So Sikander carries on beaming. Hear my tale well. Friend from London. Repeat. The Arconi tribe pure descendants of assassins from Persia. And that's why Yarkunis look so unlike us, Chitralis. They are assassins from back, you know, the oasis of Godsvin, the Elbers Mountains, back jungle roads going up to the Caspian Sea. People, while we are fair-skinned, of Greek descent. But we all live together harmoniously in that uh, our mountain uh, code of hospitality called Mel Maestia. Osama bin Laden made good use of that. Mel Maestia protection. What is Mel Maestia? Don't look it up on your smartphone. You have the CIA knocking on your door, checking out your communications. Well, Melmesia, that's when our village elders will serve passing strangers food and drink with their own hands. Yeah, wherever they ha happen to come from. We must shelter a wanderer. We must feed them. We must protect them from avalanches, snowstorms, uh, and enemies, even if we die protecting these total strangers. Oh, remarkable words, huh? Gifts, Kipling, goosebumps. Time flies. When you're having such a good time, you just zen out the whole trip. And now they're only a half a kilometer before Mustouge, before the Summer Palace. Yeah. And <laughs> bridge washed out. <laughs> See, can do now. Happens all the time. He just drives up a little bit upstream. He's got a four-wheel drive Jeep. Well, you have to up here. And he splashes across in the shallow spot there. So, uh, Come on, I'm going to introduce you personally to King Sharif. Well, it's nearly dark as Seekin' their guides Kipling up the bluff 
to the fortified palace of the Matar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Impressive watchtowers. Mm -hmm. Clay-baked, battlemented walls. Uh, over looking, well, a commanding view. It's a strategic view overlooking the confluence of the Yarkuni and the Larchpur rivers. You can see why they built the palace here. Well, holding a glass hooded lantern, it's getting dark. Seeking to guide this British guest into the palace is a true creepy cobweb, dusty hall with all those e bags, stuffed e bags heads looking at you. Uh, Matar ghosts from three centuries of Aramzada rule. King Sharif. I bring a young traveler before you as he innocently passes through your kingdom. Yeah, south of the Oxus River, okay. West of Istanbul. You, know, you haven't seen a freak like this guy yet. Um, so Sikandar parts the dusty uh, decaying. Turkestani curtains uh, and holds up the lantern illuminating the throne room Ooh. of uh, King Latif the king appears dead or submerged in, in a pile of Persian pillows with silk turquoise pillowcases bling bling yeah, cushy pillowcases. Mm-mm. I don't think so.